Today's scripture portion is taken from Luke Gospel, chapter 1, verses 57 to 80. Luke chapter 1, verses 57 to 80. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors was, were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies, and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our fathers, Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our Lord, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit. And he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. Can we bow down to prayer? So gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you Lord for this time and opportunity that you have given to us to come into thy presence to bow down before thee. Thank you for this great day. Thank you for this Christmas day that we could meet Lord. Thank you, Lord, for coming into this world as a baby. Lord, you had the plan all along. And thank you for coming into this world, Lord, to save us. And Lord, we are so happy that you did that because we are redeemed because you came into this world. Lord, thank you for the word that you brought before us today. Lord, we pray that you speak eat with each of us. Empty us, Lord, fill us with the word. Lord, help us to be receptive. Help us to understand your word and to apply it to our hearts. Lord, your child that is talking to the Lord today, you enable him, you fill him with your spirit, lead him and guide him. We ask this in the precious name of the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed Christmas, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your day. It's been a blessing being here. Um, I'm even part of my family, so that's cool. <laughs> um, God is good. And I've had the whole story read. Um, parts that I'm not speaking to, I've had read. Okay, so now I come to the last. And if you read this whole narrative of Luke on the birth of Christ, the coming of John, the birth of John, uh, 
it's very fascinating how much of these the stories of John and the stories of Jesus, Zachariah, Elizabeth, Mary, and then Joseph is, comes in, <laughs> in Luke. Um, it's fascinating how much they parallel and how much there's a comparison when you, when you work with those two. There's four sections here, okay? So I, taught, I had one read, I taught on one, and then just had a third one read, and I'm teaching on the fourth. There's four sections here. And it's fascinating if you read those together and look at the, the parallels and also the differences, the things that are different and what the Spirit is bringing forward. But in today, we look at the joy of the Lord. Um, if you notice, Zechariah and his prayer over John had to do with joy. And when Elizabeth gave birth, all the relatives rejoiced with her. There's just a whole bunch of joy coming towards this latter part in Luke's narrative. What's fascinating is in Luke's narrative, he does not go to the struggle of Joseph trying to figure out about Mary, um, what, what he should do with her um, as she came, you know, pregnant. <laughs> in betrothal, which in that time, that's what the betrothal was for, was to test the bride, test the groom, faithfulness, and so on and so forth, part of it. Um, well, Luke doesn't even deal with that. He just keeps going from one angel showing up to another angel showing up to another angel showing up. And in between that, the Holy Spirit entering someone and speaking. The Holy Spirit entering into someone and speaking. You, you, understand, you follow? That's where Luke goes. To Luke, this is magnificent. This is marvelous. This is over the top. This is amazing. This is fulfillment. This is what God had promised for years and years and years. Generations and generations and generations. The hope, the want... The hunger, the desire, yeah, the cry. And even Zachariah and Elizabeth, the cry for a child. And they probably had quit on that cry. And then the angel shows up when they're past age, especially she's past age. And the angel shows up and says, oh, your prayer has been heard. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, as a priest, he was probably praying as he went into the temple, the altar of incense, was probably praying for the salvation of Israel. His prayer had been heard. The salvation was here. But there's that other side of the Lord that I almost want to call it the humor of the Lord, where he waits till we quit, and then he moves. He waits until we get frustrated, maybe. We don't know what to do. And we come up with our conclusion, and then he shows up. And then he straightens it all out. <laughs> and then he shows us his glory. And then we repent. <laughs> yeah. This is our God. And Luke is showing these amazing events. And to him, it's this marvel. It's this wonder. And all human beings are brought to fear and to awe. It's amazing. Read them. Meditate. Study. As Mary. We will see Mary today again. Yeah, let me pray. Father, we just thank you for granting us thy son. Jesus, we thank you. This was your day, Lord, to come in the flesh. We remember this day. We come to your word where you've given us word to see, Lord, to ponder on, to take it deep into our heart, our minds, to renew our minds, Lord, and in a sense, to escape this world, to enter into the kingdom of God. 
and to be transported from here, Lord, to heaven, to enjoin with the host of heaven in praising you, magnifying your name. And we thank you, Lord, that you always do everything to bring glory to your name and for thy name's sake. Help us to live for that. Help us to live for thy name's sake and for thy glory. We're so selfish, Lord. Deliver us. Show us yourself today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yay, okay, well, now we move forward. John has been born, and he's been growing. Um, they brought him to be circumcised. They named him. They obeyed is what they did. And instantly, Zechariah, did you notice something? Some bring out that they signed to Zechariah. Why didn't they talk to him? Remember, he was mute. But they signed to him. What should be his name? Some have noted he must have also been dead. Isn't that something? Take a note of that. Why did they sign to him? What do you want his name to be? Why didn't they just say, ask him? Some think he was also de uh, deaf. So not just mute, but also deaf. <laughs> wow. But instantly, He's back, and fear came on the people again. Yeah. I'm not sure we fear enough. You know, I think, I don't think we're in awe enough. I think we read kind of dull. You know, the scripture talked about being dull-minded. We don't want to be like that. We want to enter in. We want to discover again afresh. Because every generation is discovering anew and afresh. I have grandchildren that are just baby, you know. They, they're, ju they're just discovering. Yeah, we should always be discovering. All right, chapter 2, Luke. And in those days, there came a decree from Caesar Augustus to register all the inhabited world. Now, this registration was the first to come while Quirinius was governing Syria. Yeah, yeah, and they all went out to be registered, each to his own town. So Joseph rose from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, into Judea, to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house of his father David, in order to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was pregnant. How inconvenient. What a trying time. She's pretty darn far along. She has to be because by the time they get there, we know the story, right? She's pretty far along. She's got to move now because she's betrothed to Joseph who's got to go to this town of David, Bethlehem. You know what that name of Bethlehem means? Anybody know? The house of bread. The house of bread. You know the story of Ruth? There was a famine in Bethlehem. The house of bread, there was famine. That's a paradox. That's like, huh? How can that be? The story of Ruth is very interesting. Yeah, this is the house of bread. And what did Jesus say? He is the bread of life. There's a lot here. But more, why Bethlehem? What is this? Why this decree? How irritating. A tyrannical government forcing the people all to get up and move. But this is a Jewish thing, not a Roman thing. Roman thing, you could be registered wherever you were. Wherever the city was you lived, that was Roman. But the Jewish thing was you go to your own house, your own town, and you get registered there. 
So this was a combination kind of thing, and a lot of people discussed what was going on here. Now, the point is, is it's very inconvenient. Do you understand? This is very, wow. And governments do that to us, don't they? They do things that are just inconvenient. We get irritated, we get agitated, right? We get anxious about these things. But the whole time is, it's God moving the people. But our eyes, our view is, we see what this human government's doing and the irritation involved with it. But we don't see the hand of God. But let's turn to Micah, okay? Micah chapter 5. You'll turn with me there. Micah chapter 5. But you, verse 21. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from the ancient of days. That is a fascinating passage. Here's this babe coming in the womb of a mom. And he's the ancient of days. You know, the reality is, we cannot comprehend that. How can the ancient of days, from of old, be in the womb of a virgin? But the point here is, where would this one come forth? In the house of bread. Bethlehem. So here in this registration, it's God moving all the rulers, moving all the peoples, shuffling humanity at all levels of society, moving them to fulfill his word. Exactly. This is a really good context as we see the world today and nations, rulers, even God's hand stretched out over America. And it is. And he's not relenting. He has his arm stretched out over America and he's judging her. And he's not relenting. And we see these rulers so wicked, so unjust, so ungodly, doing, lying, flat out, just right out to us, right? All this stuff going on all across the world. All these protests because the rulers are doing such ridiculous things, and they are. But the hand of God. God moving everything shifting, moving. Maybe we should be looking up and not down. Maybe we should be considering the hand of God and not the acts of men and women. It's a reality. This was inconvenient. Okay, you ladies who have been pregnant say you're what? right in that ninth month, eighth, ninth, seventh month, whatever. I don't know how long it would take them to go, but especially with her pregnant, it would take longer, right? And there's a movie, what is that movie? Where they show that pretty well? The Nativity, yeah, that movie. Have you guys seen that movie? That's I brought it up last week, I couldn't remember the name of it, The Nativity. Good movie. They kind of show the little bit of inconvenience and the struggle and the difficulty of getting her <laughs> to Bethlehem for this registration. But what is it? It's literally God moving the rulers. Timing. Moving all the people, even Joseph and Mary, 
to the place where they need to be to fulfill his word. And let's read on in Micah. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace, their shalom. It was all foretold. And that's what Luke is showing. It was all foretold. It's all being fulfilled right before our eyes. And yet, who of the people could see? And we see the angel of the Lord coming to this one, to this one, to this one, to these. We see the Lord showing up and then people through what he does with that one or that one, suddenly it affects other people. And things start resonating through the community. And Mary is taking it all But it's irritating. Yeah. God moving the people. <laughs> that brings us to the birth. Verse 6. Luke 2, verse 6. And it came about while they were there that the days for her to give birth were fulfilled. And she bore her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. A lot of discussion about this, but it's really very mild, very humble. While they were there, how long had they been there? We don't know. There's a lot of discussion. Uh, the movie The Nativity shows it as they came into Bethlehem. Basically, he was trying to find a place because she was going into labor. But as, as they were there, so they were at Bethlehem, and as they were there, she went into labor. But there was no place for them in the inn. Many proposed that they were probably in a house at the beginning. But once she went into labor, there was no, because of all the people moving, all the people there, there was no place for her, you understand, to have a child. So they had to move, this some proposed, they had to move her to get her to a place. And that was the place where they could get to. But this is very important. You know that song we sang, I, last night I was with Ratna and Savarna and their family and had dinner with them. It was a blessing and we sang that heart the herald angels sing and it's that one line, mildly he lays his glory by. That is such a powerful line. Mildly he lays his glory by. That's what he's doing here. This is the ancient of days. <laughs> and he's born <laughs> in flesh, mildly setting aside his glory, his majesty. We cannot comprehend this, you guys. I tried. I mean, I've been studying this for weeks, and I, I just, Lord, I is this, I, what, this is amazing. And you think why the world just kind of, <laughs> right? It's a wonder that He's opened our eyes to believe. 
It's a gift. But he's the gift. But for him to become the gift, he had to mildly, that's taken from the word meek. He meekly, mildly set that glory aside. And condescended. Do you understand that? He condescended to be able to reach us. That's why he says, I am lowly and meek when he's older. Wow. This is beautiful. It's soft. It's warm. It's close. And it's going to be very close because there's other characters to be brought in. Fascinating. God is amazing. And here he is. In flesh. And his mom wraps him in cloth. You know, just born. You know, there was no hospital. No doctor. Midwife? I don't know. Maybe a midwife? Doesn't say nothing about midwife. You know, Joseph and her delivered this baby. From all what we can account here. Wow. What a trial. What an effort. What a task put on the people. Two servants of the Lord. Trying to work this out. You know, this great one. It's all been proclaimed. This one going to sit on the throne of his father David forever and of his kingdom no end. And he's born in a manger. <laughs> Why? Well, again, God is working. It's God's hand. Because there's this group of people out there. There are no accounts. Yeah, Ratna spoke to them. They're called shepherds, right? But like them, so he. In other words, they would totally understand. The rich, the wealthy, the kings, the queens, they wouldn't understand that. This is the king of kings. This is the lord of lords. This is the ancient of days. This is the one from of old. In a stable. In a manger. Right. Yeah. No one sees. Quiet. Soft. Close. Warm. But inconvenient. Inconvenient. Wow. So he's born. Mildly, he lays his glory by. That's for our sake. He comes to us humbly, lowly, and meek. That's how he comes to us. Wow. Verse 8. And there were shepherds in the field. These were living outdoors. And they were guarding, keeping watch by night over their sheep, their flocks. And the angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord enveloped them. And they feared with a great fear. <laughs> okay. Who are these guys? Shepherds, right? Let me read from a brother who spoke to them. You know, when the angel showed up to Zechariah, he was afraid, right? It was deeply troubled. It said the same thing, Mary, deeply troubled, right? 
And the angel said, don't fear, right? These guys, they fear with a great fear. I mean, they were really terrified. They were really afraid. Why? Oh, they were no accounts. That's why. <laughs> Who were these guys? Whoa, as a class, shepherds had a bad reputation. The nature of their calling kept them from observing the ceremonial law. Why? They were always unclean. They were never clean. Do you understand that? They were always working with, well, dung, you know, manure, you know, animals, right? Dirt. They were never clean. So they were never able to really partake in the ceremonial laws. Because they were just, yeah, okay. So they're kind of cast out, which meant so much to religious people. More regrettable was their unfortunate habit of confusing mine with thine as they moved about the country. You know what he's saying there? They were thieves. <laughs> so wherever they went, they just kind of, well, you don't need that. I need, you know, I need that. So I confuse mine with thine. Yeah, what's yours is mine. Okay, that's that's right. Uh, yeah, this is fair, right? Robin Hood, right? Yo, you're too rich anyway. You got too much. Give it to me. I need it. These are these guys, all right? <laughs> so they travel around. They're moving their flock, right? Because sheep, when they graze, they really take it to the ground. So you got to keep moving with sheep, okay? <laughs> so these guys, they're unclean. They're thieves. Right? Okay. Oh, this is amazing. As they moved about the country, they were considered unreliable and were not allowed to give testimony in the law courts. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, you need to take that and hold on to that. They were not allowed to give testimony to witness in the courts of men. That's who these guys were. So when it says they feared with a great fear, it's because their conscience was not clean. Do you understand? <laughs> these guys, suddenly the glory of the Lord envelops them. I mean, an angel shows up. He's standing before them, and suddenly the glory of the Lord's all around them, and they're just lit up. And suddenly, exposed. Where are you going to go? Oh, sinner man. Where are you going to run to? Oh, sinner man. Where are you going to run to? Where are they going to run? They're caught. They're exposed. You know, stage like this light hitting me. Bah, boom, right? Only if it's the glory of the Lord, right? Ah! And they're probably down. And they were afraid with a great fright. And what's the angel say to them? Don't be afraid. Right. <laughs> oh, don't be afraid. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> right. I've just been exposed to the core of my being, my conscience, my mind, my heart, my whole life just flashed before me. All my sins, everything. This is the glory. This is the bathing of the Lord. This is the holiness of God enveloped around them. And they're caught. And the angel said to them, do not fear. Easy for you to say. <laughs> I don't think we fear enough. If we don't fear, how can he say to us, don't be afraid? These guys were right to be afraid. Wow. But the Lord does say to us, 
don't be afraid. And he does say, come boldly to the throne of grace, right? We can do that now. But I think we need to do it in awe and in wonder. And remember this story. And the reality of the uncleanness of our flesh. These men, believe me, <laughs> they knew. They had it right. <laughs> they knew. They were caught. And the angel, hey guys, don't be afraid. But he gives them the reason why. For I have long to lead, so that is the good news. That's the gospel, where we get the word gospel, right? Yeah, this is where the preaching of the good news, this is that word, that's what he's saying. I'm coming to you preaching good news of great joy. There it is. Wow. Which shall be to all the people, because today a Savior has been born to you who is Christ, the Lord, in the town of David. Who are these guys to be receiving such an amazing proclamation? An amazing declaration over them, to them, being presented to them. And they're just trying to come out and not to be afraid. <laughs> I mean, this whole process is amazing. You read Luke, it's like, wow. Everybody's just, wow. And they're all trying to figure it out and the angel just keeps telling them. One after the other. Wow. Again, not of great education, not high reputation, in fact, low reputation. And here's this angel declaring to them the greatest story ever brought forward. <laughs> One of the greatest events ever in the history of humanity. They're being told of their salvation. I can only try to imagine what's happening inside them. Amazing. And this will be the sign to you. Okay, we're back a sign. Now this is going to be a sign to you. Okay? Now you got to remember the anointed one. Right? The Lord. Christ the Lord. Christos is to be anointed. It's the same as Messiah in Hebrew. The Messiah. Okay? The Lord is this one who has been born. And this can be the sign to you. Okay, here's the sign. You're thinking palace, right? You're thinking, right? I mean, this is, oh, this is the Messiah. This is Christ, the anointed one, the promised one. What are you thinking? Wow, but here's the sign. You will find an infant being wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. <laughs> Mildly, he lays his glory aside. But these guys, they're going to get it. They're shepherds. You know, what's in a stable? Right? They're shepherds. They understand this setting. It's amazing. Kings and queens. They wouldn't even be found here. 
but the king of kings, you will find him here. Grace, mercy, wow. And suddenly there came with the angel a multitude of hosts of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and upon earth peace among those men with whom he is well pleased. Well, the choir shows up. <laughs> I guys, this is like, you got to think about this. These guys were out at night watching their sheep, right? And all of a sudden, <laughs> and angels were here. And he's declaring to them, Christ, the Lord, a Savior has been born for you. And you'll find him here. This is the sign. And suddenly, there's a choir. This is heaven giving praise. They get it. They know what this is. This has been planned, right? And they've been part of God's working it through the ages, working this out, bringing this to flesh and blood. And suddenly all of heaven, host of heaven, just, what music? Wow. What voices? What harmony? Host of heaven, just singing it. Declaring it. Like I said, I, I tried to wrap my head around this. This is like, wow. I try to imagine from the shepherds. <laughs> You know, they're probably mute, but not because he, they've been muting, but they're just mute. So they, uh, 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 uh. Wow. Wow. God, over the top. Amazing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and that's what they're saying. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Among those with whom he is well pleased. That's very interesting. God working. Shepherds being given a sign as they, so he comes. They will get it. And then it comes that, well, it's been done. And suddenly, and they all leave. And no shepherds are left. It's night, I remember. <laughs> it's all gone. Angels gone. The glory's gone. The host in heaven's gone. <laughs> wow. I kind of wonder if they probably looked at each other. Did you see what I saw? Did, did you hear what I hear? Am I going crazy or is it? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> it came about as they went away from them into heaven, the angels went away from them into heaven, that the shepherds spoke to one another. Yeah, I wonder what all they were saying. <laughs> but they got to it. Uh, let's go check it out. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> the shepherds spoke to one another. Let us go now into Bethlehem and see this. There's the latest skin of a rainbow. See this pronouncement 
of this matter over us. Let's go look. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go see. Which has come about, which the Lord has made known to us. Oh, they knew it was the Lord. Instant change of character. <laughs> Flashpoint. Oh my, it's the Lord on their mind. And he has spoken to us. Let's go check it out. Let's go to Bethlehem. He's given us something here, you guys. He's given us something here. You know what? We have it here in the Bible. Do you check it out still? Or do you just read through it and you know this story? Or do you check it out? Do you come back to the wonder? Because I'm going to tell you, these shepherds, they will forever remember that. They will never forget that night. I'm going to tell you, they will recount it to their children and their grandchildren. Do you understand? This was no small matter to them. And this wasn't just words written on a page either to them. This was the real deal. This was the Lord Almighty. And he showed up and he made known to us, guys, we need to go check this out. And off they go. <laughs> And they came with haste. Oh, did someone else leave with haste? Do you remember? Who rose and went with haste after she received from the angel? It was Mary. Remember? She rose and with haste went to the countryside and entered into the house of Zechariah. Oh, we have it again. They rose up with haste. And they're going down to Bethlehem. And they're in a haste. They're in a rush. Whew. And they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. The sign. This is the sign. Now you know what has been spoken to you is from the Lord. There he is. Wow. Now, remember who these guys were. They were not allowed to give testimony, witness in the courts of men. They were louses, okay? They were liars. They were thieves. They were, right? Okay? <laughs> but God comes to them and gives them the news and what do they do with it what do they do with it <laughs> and seeing and when they saw it, <laughs> excuse me and when they saw it they made known the same which had been told them concerning this child. Instantly they became witnesses. <laughs> they became the testifiers. Do you realize these are the first, well, so can we say evangelists of the Lord? Do you realize this is even before John the Baptist gives testimony of Jesus? The first ones whom God gives the right, the joy, the filling, the realization of the story, the testimony, are those who are rejected amidst men. And they're the first to give the testimony, the witness of the Savior's birth. 
they're just trying to work this out and they're just they're amazed and they're just filled now and all those hearing what all those hearing what Yeah, they marveled how moms were. They were amazed. Why would these guys have such a revelation? It's God's way to shake up the people. Remember I talked about this already? He's not afraid to stir up the people. This is perfect. I mean... <laughs> Wouldn't you be listening to these guys knowing who these guys were and all of a sudden they're declaring the wonders and the things of God? And this testimony of this glory and this angel and the host of heaven declaring to them and God making known to them this. And they went and they checked and there he was. Just as God told us. We found the baby wrapped in a manger. You can go check yourself. And all those hearing were marveling. Amazing. Amazing night. Amazing. Yeah, there's a song about that, huh? Amazing. Amazing. Whew. And all those hearing marveled concerning the words which were spoken by the shepherds to them. And now we come to verse 19. Going back to Mary. You gotta remember, Joseph and Mary are now <laughs> part of this rush. Joseph and Mary, I mean, all of a sudden these shepherds show up, right? <laughs> and they're all... And Joseph and Mary are like, wow, okay, guys, what? <laughs> oh, well. And they declare to them. And what's Mary doing with all this? And Mary, this is very interesting, this word kept all these things. Oh, it's actually that Ramata, Rama again. All these testimonies, all these pronouncements, all these words, she kept them, but literally the word in the original means to protect. That is, she took them in and she like kept them, protected them within her. Now she's taking this all in and keeping it deep inside of her and then it says and she's pondering on it meditating on it over and over and the idea of blessed is man who meditates day and night on the word of right psalm you know the psalm blessed is the man who met that word meditates literally means to recite over and over just loud enough for yourself to hear yourself Mary was probably reciting these things over and over, holding it deep in her heart. All these testimonies, all these words, all these <laughs> events in the last nine, ten months of her life. She'd been taking it all in and guarding it, protecting it. Not letting it go, but holding on to it and meditating on it over and over, pondering it, wondering on it. This will be God's way of preparing her for the trials that are ahead. as one will even speak over her. 
Mary kept all these matters, these words, in her heart. And she pondered on them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God over all the things that they had heard and they had seen, just as it was spoken to them. Amen. Oh, they knew. Oh, Lord. This is your salvation. This is the safe. They knew now. Their lives were changed. And suddenly from no good to believers. Change of heart. Flash, bang. <laughs> new men, wow. New life, new wonder. Everything is new. And they're praising and worshiping God now. I want to camp on one last thing here. Verse 21. When the eight days were fulfilled for his to be baptized or to be circumcised, they called his name Jesus, Jesus, which was called by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. See the parallel? John. Now Jesus. Do you realize that neither John nor Jesus were named by humanity? They were named by God. Man did not name Jesus. Woman did not name Jesus. Do you understand? God named him. And told them, this is what you're to name. Same with John. And so they did. They obeyed. But what's in the name? Why the name? Well, let's close on the name. Let's go to some verses that I put together and consider the name. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. This is at the <laughs> regeneration of the disciples. This is, you know, 30 years later, all right? And they're going to speak at their preaching here, at their speaking here, about the name. In verse 5, let's start there in Acts chapter 4, verse 5. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high, high priestly family. When they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power, by what name did you do this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Do you understand that? No other name given under 
heaven. So God named John, but it's not his name. Do you understand? He named this son. And Joseph and Mary named him Jesus. And if that is the name God gave underneath the sun by which all humanity can be saved. Through Christ. Through Jesus. Today this is very important because the true gospel is really being thrown out the door. The world is going more and more pagan. Do you understand? Leaving the truth and truth lies slain in the street. But there's only one name given under heaven. And it was given by God. This is the name. He is the one and only way to the Father. What's in a name? It's the name. <laughs> wow. Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. There it is. He mildly laid it by. You understand? He emptied himself. He lowered himself. And mildly laid by his glory. Have this mind amongst yourselves. Let us too lay it aside. Our glory, our pride, our wannabe, our wannabe great. No. Set it aside. That's what he's saying. Follow Jesus. Lowly and meek. Set it aside. But emptying himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's why God named him this name. So that all ages, all generations, all peoples would know that's the name. That's the one. He is the Savior born to humanity. This is the good news and the great joy which has been proclaimed and God gave this name under the sun so that forever humanity would know that's the one. And there's no other name. And that name is exalted above every name. And every knee, as those shepherds, will bow and confess. What's in a name? <laughs> in God's eyes, a lot. Let's finish on John chapter 3. Most familiar verse probably in all the world. Verse 16. For God so loved the world. You know, I think that's what the shepherds felt. <laughs> wow. God must really love us. 
to show us this, to make known to us this? They were back, going back, praising and thanking God. <laughs> For God so loved the world. That is, God loved the world in this way. This is how he loved the world. That he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And you know, God testifies of this often through unclean human servants. Through those who are rejected by man, God proclaims. God testifies. And so we stand together and I stand here and I testify. This is the love of God. This is the Savior born to the world. And his name that God gave to him is Jesus. And in other languages, how they say that name. Do you understand? And God knows them all. Because <laughs> it's the same name. He is the one. And there's one other word that is the same in every language. Do you know what it is? In every language. Yeah, that's one. But there's one big one. Hallelujah. Do you know what that word means? Hal, halal is to praise. Ooh, us, we, let us praise Yah. Hallelujah. Yah. God. It's the same in every language. We share this with the students in Mariposa. All these groups of students. It's the same. Hallelujah. Let us praise God. Praise God. It's the same. In every language. <laughs> I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that's from God. Do you understand? One name, Jesus. And one word, praise God. That's what Luke is showing. Isn't this marvelous? Isn't this amazing? Are you not coming to the amazement of the people's hearing the shepherds? How can this be? All the world is over there busy. While over here, in a lowly and meek, I don't know if it was a quiet night or not. <laughs> It seems like it was pretty active. But there were so few knew anything. And God choosing who he will approach to make it known. Do you know that's what he did with us? He approached us out of that same mercy, out of that same grace, out of that same love, out of that same care for our salvation. And he spoke our name. And he called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light that we would become as those shepherds. Ah, wow. Amazing. 
Lord, we just come to you. You are amazing. Bring us back to our awe, Lord. Our wonder. You are so just amazing. And how you work, Lord. Thank you. That you come to the low, the downtrodden, the common. And you make it known. And you open the eyes, Lord, of those in darkness. And you envelop us with thy glory. I pray, Lord, open our hearts, open our minds. This is your day, Lord. This is where we remember. Lord Jesus, This you were born here. You know it intimately. This was your time. We know you come again. We pray with the Spirit and the Bride. Lord Jesus, come. Lord, come. But we also thank you for your patience and your forbearance. Lord, wanting to say more. I pray. Help us to be faithful and to fulfill our ministry, Lord, as you've called us to it. Thank you for these shepherds, Lord, where you started. So dirty, the rascals. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just thank you in Jesus' name for this time together. Amen. Amen. And may the glory of the Lord envelop you afresh and anew. <laughs> may you join with the host of heaven and praise him and glorify him in the simplicity of meekness. Go in peace. Yay.